Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. And boy, what a treat, because I just got out to see an awesome fourth installment in the Mad Max series, the film that made Mel Gibson a rising star. Yep, because they made all three Mad Max films. You know, the first one, the second one, which turned out to be the best one of the series, called The World Warrior. And the third one, which turned out to be the weakest, which is Beyond Thunderdome. So now, we finally got the movie, Mad Max Fury Road. Which stars Tom Hardy from Inception and The Dark Knight Rises. You know, taking over for Mel Gibson's role. Charlie Farron, Nicholas Holt, Hugh Keyes Byrne, Rosie Hutton to Ridley. From the movie Transformers The Dark of the Moon, yeah, the third installment. Ridley Keough, Zoe Kravitz, Abby Lee, Courtney Eaton, Joss Hellman, Nathan Jones, John Howard, Richard Carter, Gillian Jones, Megan Gale, and Joe Smithers. And it's co written and directed by George Miller, who's responsible for all of the Mad Max movies. And of course, he had directed um, the segments from the movie Twilight Zone, the movie, as well as The Witches of Eastwick. And of course, Babe, along with its sequel. The movie begins set during a nuclear war, which had became a desert wasteland, and the civilization had collapsed. Max Watonski who is a survivor, who is now being played by Tom Hardy, is being captured by the Ward Boys, which is an army that's won by Amorton Joe, who is played by Hugh Keys Byrne. He's taken to Joe's Sattel to design as a universal blood donor, which he's being imprisoned by using as a blood bag for the sick Ward Boy named Nux, who is played by Nicholas Holt. So meanwhile, a woman named Imperial Furiosa, who's played by Charlie Ferrin, has driven an armored war rig to collect gasoline. So he drove off road as Joe realized that his five wives, the women are selected for breeding, are missing. So Joe leads his entire army in pursuit of Furiosa, calling on the aid of a nearby gas town and a bullet farm. So Nux wants up joining the army with Max strapped into the car to continue to supply blood and a huge battle ensured between the rigs and Joe forces. Suddenly they wind up driving into the sandstorm, evading all the pursuers, which except for Nux, who attempts to sacrifice himself by destroying the rig. So Max finally escapes and restrains Nux, but suddenly the car was destroyed, and after that huge storm, Max finally seek Furiosa by repairing her rig, which suddenly was accompanied by the wives themselves, which is named Angora, Capable, Cheeto, Toast, and the Dad. So suddenly Max had stolen the rig, but killed the switches by disabled it, and reluctantly agreed to let Furiosa and the wives uh, accompany him, until suddenly Nux had returned to Joe because they keep leaving him behind after he was trying to cut off the, the chain that was hooked up into the mast. So then suddenly Furiosa had dried through the bike game territory into the narrow canyon where they had agreed to exchange gasoline for the passage. But Joe forces are close behind and Furiosa flees while the bikers had to terminate the canyon walls to block his path. So Max and Furiosa had fend off all the bikers out there and suddenly uh, they evaded a blockade and attacked the rig. Nux finally boards into the rig while Joe actually attempts to stop Furiosa. So then they managed to escape into the green place which is actually located where she actually remembers from her youth. But suddenly you know they had a hard time finding it. So with that aside, you know, they were still trying to escape all the riders out there that, that's going after them. 
So then once they finally went into the bullet farmer to pursue the rig, Nux actually helped them free the rig while Furiosa wants up shooting and blind the, the bullet farmer. So they walk into the dark confronting the bullet farmer and his men between the guns and the mission. So as the dawn breaks, uh, the rig travels from the swampland into the desert, which they actually finally f spotted um, a naked woman on their path, and they thought it was going to be a trap at first. But then, you know, they knew they, you know, they found all the women that summoned her group, and because they already found out that you know, Furiosa is working for them. But since they found out that the swamp land was passed by the green place that they were going for, they're trying to find a better way to go back to it before it's too late. And that's where everything becomes, as we've seen, a huge final battle to the to the punch against uh, Max, Furiosa, the rest of the game, and the mortal Joe going after them, uh, along with his crew. So that's pretty much what the movie's all about, and granted, I think this was definitely, without a doubt, one of the best summer action movies I've ever seen um, so far this year, even though I did see The Avengers Age of Ultron, which I really enjoy, this one is even better. In fact, I think this was a much better film than the third movie, uh, Beyond Thunderdome, that's for sure. It was a little better than the first movie, but still, the first film was a classic. But I think it did remind me of the second movie, The Road Warrior, because it was that film had a lot of action that they went for. But this one was different. It's basically what the film is about. You know, Max being a survivor, you know, dealing with uh, trying to survive all all the, the wasteland that he's been in, and trying to struggle to survive. By going between all these paths and everything, and with the help of Fierosa and all the rest, you know they're trying to trying to be able to get to you know civilization as they know it by by be able to keep all the gas and and be able to get to the the land where they have all the water and everything, so they they be able to live. So that that's what the film is about, basically, you know, survival. They did actually show the Mad Max's uh, Inceptor, you know, the one that was turbocharged and everything that they had for that car. Uh, mostly, yeah, which is actually shown where the Ward Boys actually stole it from him. And I remember he actually says it twice. That's mine! <laughs> I, I thought that was funny. And yeah, they, they did show a lot of that too in, in, in the movie. It's just too bad he, he didn't get a chance to use it. I wish he did. That would have been cool. Maybe if he had stole it back from, from the Ward Boys. That would have been awesome. And of course, we couldn't forget the line. As you already saw the tagline in the posters. What a lovely day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe Nux had said it too. That was really cool. Very classic. Yeah, because, you know, the movie is indeed, you know, all set in Australia. Yeah, and they have some very thick Australian accents that they use. And some some of them, yeah. So it's really cool. But boy, th this really had a lot of stuff that they went into the film. Um, I love the, f the use of color temperature that they use for the night and day shots. You know, because the day shots were all, you know, colored in, in gold with yellow in the mix of it so they really had a lot of interesting shots of it with with some flashing uh, red uh, explosions that they show up when they when all the riders started to go up around and the desert looks uh, a whole lot beautiful you know very unique it almost looks as beautiful as as any of those desert shots you see in many movies before that so it's interesting and the shots where they went straight to the sandstorm that's all covered in red. It was perfect. And yeah, even in the night shots where it's all, you know, in a blue tint. So it looks uh, very natural the way they did all of this. And yes, they did use a lot of practical effects, mostly for all these, uh, all the cars and that they actually use in the film that actually crashes all together. There's a lot of that too. 
they did use incredible stunts that they really had, especially with all the characters, you know, including Nux, too, because they keep flying all the way around here and there as it starts crashing. But they did use some CGI effects, mostly from the sandstorms, and and I think they did use it from the beginning with the, the two-headed lizard that, that we saw. And, and Max actually ate it, too. But, yeah, and then and there were a few more that they went into, but the rest is just all uh, worth it. A lot of great action scenes. Um, uh, I, I'll give you this, though. Tom Hardy did a good job playing uh, Max. Yeah, Mad Max, that is. Because even though it's almost close enough to, to play the role that, Matt, that Mel Gibson had played in all three of the films, because I know Mel Gibson was a lot better when he played them. I thought he kind of he kind of suited the the character in, in a much different way because now he's more furious than 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 being mad. So that's interesting because he's a great actor, you know, very underrated actor ever since he's been in those movies I've seen. So yeah, he did a good job. But Charlie Sferon, of course, is the real star of the film when she played Imperial Furiosa, and I think she was definitely the toughest girl of all throughout the entire movie. I mean, this is really her story. I mean, the fact that she's trying to trying to get a way to survive by going into the Greenland. So that way she'll be able to get more water and be able to save everybody, including the wives. But sadly, you know, one of them, which I'm not going to give too much away, but you know what happens to one of them. Because I know uh, one of them actually was pregnant, by the way. You know, she was about to have her child. And then, goodness knows what happens then. But everything that they went into was really something. Also, uh, I had to say, Hugh Keith Byrne, and now, just so you know, he was from the original Mad Max. It was, it was kind of creepy to actually see him in this movie because, you know, he has, like, light uh, white hair you know, all the way around and... And he's wearing that creepy mask that looks almost similar to the mask I've seen in the in the TV show Bleach. Yeah, the ones that they actually wore you know, during their battles. You know. So yeah, it, it was I, I couldn't believe I had to see that. And that's interesting. And they got a lot of characters that they threw in into the movie, including the one that's actually playing the guitar with all the drums that's beating around. It, it was it was just amazing. I, I never thought I would see movies like this that had a lot of good stuff, a lot of great energy. This is exactly why we need movies like this. Because with all the action films we're getting these days with CGI written all the way around, this is the movie that we really need that focus mostly on practical effects and not just CGI. That's what we need. Because with all the crap that we're getting so far with all the blockbuster films and everything we had, this is what we really need. <laughs> that's I that's for sure. And plus the film is, is R rated now, since the last movie was PG thirteen. This is exactly why we need more films like this. So we can get more of the action and less of the, the drama and all this other crap that they put in. And that's what this movie really needs. And I was really excited. I'm glad I saw this movie. And hopefully I'll get to see it sometime again and again when it comes out on Blu-ray. And hopefully I'll, I'll get that along with all the other sequels, as well as the first movie. So it'll be part of my collection. And I hope that maybe someday they might make another uh, sequel to this yeah, at, that follows Fury Road. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but let's hope it does. Because I think that would be really cool. Because yeah. it's already becoming uh, a, a hit. I mean, granted, it's, it's it's not at number one, but it's it's becoming a modest hit uh, at this point. Let's see what happens. But definitely check this movie out if you haven't seen it. It's definitely worth watching. And you, you'll just never get tired of it. That's for sure. So anyway, I give Mad Max Fury Road an awesomely adrenaline non-stop action movie. Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.